Hey everyone, welcome to my new tutorial. Today I want to make this fun little animation similar to Star Wars and if you enjoy animation content like this, please hit that like, it will really help my channel to grow and if you're new to the channel and you want to see more, please hit that subscribe button and the bell button additionally if you want to get notified when I release something new. And if you're new to the world of 3D and Blender and you want to become a 3D illustrator, go and check out my courses that are carefully designed to teach you beginner and intermediate skills in quickest and most effective way. For example, with the new Ultimate 3D bundle, you can go from simple cubic designs all the way to full character illustration in a matter of weeks. So if you're interested, please go check out the link in the description. Now let's jump right into empty blender file and let's just delete the cube and the light. We can leave the camera in place. Let's press Shift A and let's add a plane. Now tab in, press E to extrude a tiny bit. Now hold Shift S and snap cursor to select it. Now tab out. Let's press Shift A again and add another plane. Tab in, scale it down and extrude and then press S to scale it down a tiny bit. So this will be the base of our turret. So let's press Shift S and cursor to select it. Now tab out and yet another plane here. We can press G then Z to move it a tiny bit up. So there is a gap. Now tab in, press S and scale it down like this, press E to extrude and now scale again so you match the slope of the base just like this. Okay, so this will be the base and now shift right click here to move the cursor, tab out and press shift A and let's add a circle. Now we'll reduce the number of vertices to 8 and tab in, press S to scale this down, then R, X and 90 degrees, they will rotate it 90 degrees, press G then Y and move it back inside a little bit and then press E then Y and extrude just like this. Now we can press F to fill and I to inset and let's extrude inside so press E and we'll create a hole like this and now I want Canon to be moving inside of this so let's press Shift D to duplicate this right click to release in place press G then Y to move it towards the front and now scale it down so it just sits there in the middle just like that and now extrude it outside press I to inset extrude once again then again extrude S to scale up and now inset once again and let's put a hole in there using E so this will be our cannon and you can of course scale it up and down so it looks better in place just like that now let's look from the top by pressing 7 and we'll press alt d to create a link duplicate press x and move it to the side like this and now let's prepare the model so first of all let's select the base and shift click the original plane let's press ctrl p and parent and now we'll parent the top so let's select that one shift click the base let's press ctrl p and parent it and at last we'll parent these two cannons hold shift and parent them to the top of the turret and hit object so now we can just rotate it like this and when it comes to the movement of those cannons I left them as a single object here so we can go to the object data properties and in the shape keys area click a plus icon you need to be in the object mode they'll create our basis shape key and now let's hit plus once again they'll create our first key now tab in and just hover over this object here and press L to select linked and press G then Y and move it inside like this and now if you tab out it will jump back but you have now this key and of course this can be animated so this is what we'll use for our cannon firing and yeah that's basically all that's needed for the animation so let's jump to the animation workspace and we'll switch this to graph editor just like that and start with our rotation but first I want to set up the animation so let's go to the output tab and let's switch this to 30 frames per second and I think 4 second animation should be enough so let's enter 120 for the animation end and let's insert our first keyframe so let's press I and insert rotation for the top of the terrain and now if we expand this you can see all of these tracks but we'll only use the Z so let's select X and Y holding shift and press X to delete them now we only have the Z animation there and this is the keyframe we created right here and instead of creating new keyframes um, in the viewport we can simply press shift D 
and duplicate this keyframe right here in the graph editor. But of course, we need to bring this much lower because as you can see on the scale here, if we want to rotate this 30 degrees, you need to go all the way down here. So let's press G then Y and move it down here. And now we can see what we created. Now you can see um, the thread is rotating and I think we can move this a little bit sooner. So let's press G then X and move it to somewhere like 20 frames here. Um, and now hit period on an umpad to adjust the scale according to our curve. And, and now we can select this one here, press Shift D and duplicate it and move it somewhere. You can press X to lock it on the X axis and move it somewhere like frame 65. And now select this keyframe right here and press T and choose linear. We don't want the Bezier there. We want fluent motion while firing. And of course this will need to go higher. So press G then Y and move it somewhere like 30 degrees or 35 even, something like that. And we can make it this a little bit steeper maybe, so you can play with the shape of the curve depending how fluent you want this motion to be. Okay, and now we need to return back to its original position. So let's select this keyframe right here, Shift D again and press X to lock it on the X axis and we'll return here. Maybe around frame like 100, 110, something like that. But I want this transition to be much steeper, so we can just grab this handle and move it like this. So the return is very quick. Um, as you can see here, we are firing and return back in this swift motion. Okay, I really like that. So now we can move on and animate those cannons. So let's select one of them. And here at the frame 20, we start the firing. So let's go to the object data properties and in the shape keys, select the key one and press I hovering over the value that will create a keyframe. And now let's move something like five frames and let's bring up the value all the way to one and press I again here. And you can see we have these two keyframes now. And of course we can select the first one, press Shift D, hold X and duplicate it. And we can move it like 10 frames um, towards the back. So if you select all and press period, um, you can see we have a shape like this in place. And now let's select the last one, press T and set it to linear. You will see why just in a second. And now let's play with the shape. I want this to be really steep. So we can go up like this and then return in a fast fluent motion, something like that. Okay, and now since we set this to linear, we can just select everything, press Shift D and X and duplicate it like that, just behind the first animation curve. And let's do that once again, press Shift D, hold X and duplicate it. But I think it will look great if they're not firing all at once. So we can now select this one here go to the object relations, make single user object and data. And then once again, object relations, make single user and object animation. And now these are completely separate, but we have the original keyframes. So we can just select them, press G then X and move them five frames later. So now we have this animation movement. Okay, let's move to frame one. And now I want to create the projectiles. So let's select the first cannon, hold Shift S, cursor to select it, and now press Shift A and we'll add a cylinder here. And let's set this to something like six. Now let's look from the top by pressing number seven on an umpad. Hold Z and switch to wireframe, tab in, scale it down like this. Press R, X and 90 degrees, and then S and Y to scale it on the Y axis. So we have a nice thin projectile like that, we can make it even smaller, maybe. And now let's hit three for a face select, select these two faces by holding shift. And then we can press control B um, to bevel them just like that. And now press G, then Y and move them up. And I want to parent those um, to the top of the turret as well. So hold shift, click here and press control P and parent object. Now we can select the projectile, go to the top view again and press alt D, then X and move it here. So we have two projectiles ready and now we just need to animate them and synchronize with the cannon movement. 
So let's find the frame 20 when the firing starts like this. So on the frame 20, uh, the projectile should move as well. Let's look from the camera. Let's press zero on the numpad. And I want to adjust the camera a little bit. So let's bring up the side panel by pressing N. Let's go to view section and lock camera to view. And now if you use the viewport controls, they will move the camera as well. Now let's set the output to something like 1600 to 1200. And let's set up some view that will benefit this animation something more from the top like this. And don't forget to uncheck that because every time you would move your viewport, the camera would move as well. Okay, something like that. And now let's select the projectile and let's press I and insert location keyframe. We're on the frame 20, which is totally okay. And now we only need one axis here and that's probably the Y axis. So let's select the X and Z by holding shift and let's press X. So only the Y remains. And if you try to move that keyframe here, you will see it moves in the correct direction. And now let's select this keyframe here. Now let's press Shift D and duplicate it somewhere here. Um, we need to go in the negative values of the Y axis. And now if you scrub through the timeline, you will see how it moves. And of course we need it to be faster. So right here, it needs to be away. So let's move it closer here. So it goes just behind the camera bounce and something like this. And of course we can have this in linear animation. So press T and switch to linear. And now we have something like that. Maybe it can go even faster. So it's just like a blip. Okay, something like that. And we can make all of these linear. And here we need it to return. So select this keyframe, press Shift D, X and move it somewhere here on the frame 35. And if you need to time this a little bit better, according to the turret motion, you can shift click the turret and you will see the animation curves right there and try to match it here. So let's select these projectile movements and let's press shift D and move it here just like that and once again. So this should match perfectly. Okay, looks fine. So now we can select the other projectile, shift click the first one, press Ctrl L and link animation data. So they are now animated in the same way and we need to shift them again. So let's select the other projectile, go to the object, relations, make single user and object animation. They will separate it and now you can just select everything here, press G then X and move it five frames later. So now it's synchronized with the other to right. Okay, I think this will be enough. And the last thing I want to do is to do some camera movements. So select the camera frame, go to the frame one and let's press I and insert location. Now go here, press Shift D and let's create the same keyframe on the frame 120. And now if you scrub through the timeline, you can enable a recording and just do these slight movements of the camera. So press G here in the viewport and just move it slightly, then scrub through the timeline and move it slightly once again and make sure that these are really subtle movements. Don't want anything too hectic happening here. And don't forget to disable this um, animation keyframe recording. And now you can see the camera is moving slightly. So it gives a little bit of the human touch, you know, a little bit cinematic feeling. And now we can go ahead and give this some fresh looks. So let's go to the layout view. Let's hit zero on a numpad for a camera. And now let's go for a material preview. Now we'll switch to the render settings, enable ambient occlusion, bloom and screen space reflection. So we have some nicer previews. Let's reset the cursor. So hit shift S cursor to world origin and now press shift A and let's add a plane. We'll scale it up. That will serve as our background and we can go ahead and add some material there and we can add a black background just like this and increase roughness a little bit. Now let's select this object right here. Let's create a new material and it will be slightly darker and we can add some metallic property to it. We don't need to go all the way. This is not a realistic setting. 
and we can now add this material um, to the other objects as well um, if they look too simple to you um, you can easily change it you can just go ahead um, tab in and create some loop cuts here um, some bevels maybe extrude it inside or something like that you know create some greebles uh, give this a little bit of a structure um, that's totally up to you what you want to do here maybe we can do um, cut here like this and maybe inset and extrude this and we can add some you know some greeble there well, let me go back to the frame one and let's and let's add a plane here inside this object so we have some like tiny details there um, that's really totally up to you just wanted to show you um, how you can make it a little bit more interesting and now let's select the projectile let's create a new material there let's switch from principle to emission shader let's give this a green color and some strong emission like 50 or so okay let's go back um, to the camera view let's reset the cursor once again and let's add a sunlight so let's go to the light sun bring it up and maybe tilt it a little bit so hold period and switch to the 3d cursor and just rotate it a tiny bit and we can enable scene lights and scene world so we have something like this in place and now let's add another light this time aerial light bring it up press r x 45 degrees minus and we can rotate it along the z-axis like this and bring it down maybe let's add some strength something like 500 so we have some nice backlight maybe give this some interesting color here and let's go to world settings and we can mix in some violet tones to fill the shadows now let's press ctrl b to limit the render view and let's switch to the cycles gpu and i'll enable some denoising and reduce um, the tiling to get a little bit better performance and reduce the samples to something like 128 that should be enough for animation and let's preview this um, I think it looks quite okay um, if you want more green light from those projectiles you can go all the way to something like 200 and it will flash nicely when firing okay so that's it for the animation and now we can go to the output settings um, choose your folder here and switch to the ffmpeg and container mp4 and just hit ctrl f12 and it will render out your animation into that folder and of course you can't go wrong by going into the render settings and enable motion blur and then in the compositor you can enable nodes and introduce some filter and glare um, set it to fog glow with high quality and reduce the size a little bit and that will make um, those projectiles glow nicely when you render out your frame like this um, you will see that after render it will post produce your frame and give this a nice glow so that's it for today's animation i really hope you enjoyed this one if you did again please leave that like it will really help me and again if you're new to the channel and you want to see more like this in the future please hit that subscribe thank you all for watching and have a wonderful day